The time machine hummed to a gentle halt, its gleaming metal exterior shimmering as it adjusted to the surroundings. Alice looked around, her eyes wide with wonder. She had traveled through the annals of history to the ancient city of Ilia, the intellectual cradle of the Western world. It was the year 490 BCE, and she had one goal in mind, to learn about Zeno's paradox from the masters themselves. Stepping out of the time machine, Alice found herself in the bustling market square. The cobblestone streets were lined with stalls offering a cornucopia of goods from far-flung lands. The air was rich with the aroma of exotic spices and the sound of merchants haggling in a symphony of unfamiliar tongues. She had studied the period extensively, but the vibrancy of the city was beyond anything her history books had described. Alice's heart raced as she approached a group of philosophers engaged in an impassioned debate under the shade of a sprawling olive tree. They were dressed in the customary togas of the era, their eyes alight with the fire of intellectual discourse. She recognized them immediately as members of the Eleatic School, founded by Parmenides and made famous by Zeno, the very man whose paradox she sought to understand. Summoning her courage, Alice approached the philosophers and introduced herself as a curious traveler eager to learn. They regarded her with a mix of curiosity and skepticism. What brings you to our city? One of them asked, his brow furrowed. I have come to seek wisdom, Alice replied, particularly about the famous paradox of Zeno. The mention of his name sparked a new energy in the group and they beckoned her to join them. For hours, the philosophers regaled Alice with tales of Zeno's clever arguments and the profound questions they posed about the nature of reality. They spoke of the paradox of the tortoise and the hare, where Achilles could never overtake the tortoise because he must first reach the point where the tortoise was. And by the time he does, the tortoise has moved a small but finite distance ahead. They discussed the paradox of the arrow, frozen in mid-flight because at every moment it occupies a space equal to its size and cannot be moving, and they touched upon the paradox of the stadium, where a series of runners could never reach the far end because they must first reach the halfway point and then the halfway point of the remaining distance ad infinitum. Alice listened intently, her mind racing to grasp the nuances of the discourse. But how can these paradoxes be resolved? she asked. Are we to believe that motion is an illusion? The philosophers exchanged knowing glances. Ah, young one, said the eldest among them. The beauty of Zeno's paradoxes lies in their ability to provoke thought. They challenge us to question the very fabric of our perceptions. Some say they support Parmenides' view that reality is unchanging and indivisible, while others see them as a puzzle to be solved through the study of mathematics and physics. The group grew silent for a moment, each lost in their own contemplation of the paradoxes. Then, a figure emerged from the shadows of the olive tree, a man with piercing eyes and a gentle smile. You speak of my work, he said, his voice carrying the weight of wisdom. Alice gasped. Before her stood Zeno himself, the legendary philosopher whose ideas had transcended time. He gestured for her to walk with him, and as they strolled through the ancient city, he began to unravel the mysteries of his famous paradox. Alice gasped. Before her stood Zeno himself, the legendary philosopher whose ideas had transcended time. He gestured for her to walk with him, and as they strolled through the ancient city, he began to unravel the mysteries of his famous paradox. Consider this, Zeno said, as they passed a sculpture depicting a graceful dancer in mid -lead. Does she move in an infinite number of moments, or in one continuous motion? Alice pondered the question, her eyes tracing the lines of the statue. 
It seems she moves in one motion, she offered tentatively, and yet, Zeno countered, if we divide her motion into an infinite number of moments, can she ever truly arrive at a destination? As they walked along the winding streets, Zeno led Alice to a serene garden where the soft murmur of the fountain provided a soothing backdrop to their conversation. He picked up a small pebble and tossed it into the water, watching the ripples spread out in concentric circles. Each ripple represents a moment in time, he explained. When the stone touches the water, it is not moving in the traditional sense, but rather it initiates a series of moments that carry the disturbance forward. Motion, and it's just some of these moments, not the moments themselves. Alice nodded thoughtfully, her mind racing with the implications of Zeno's words. But what of the paradox of the arrow, she pressed. If an arrow is stationary in every moment, how does it fly? Zeno's smile grew wider. The arrow is not stationary, but rather it exists in a constant state of becoming. It is the act of flying, not the moments that compose it, that define its motion. It is the intention of the archer and the force applied that give it meaning, not the moments it occupies in space. They continue their stroll, passing under the arches of the city's grand amphitheater, where the whispers of past performances seem to echo through the dusty air. Zeno spoke of how the paradoxes were not merely intellectual exercises, but tools to explore the very essence of existence. Our perceptions deceive us, he mused. We see the world as discrete moments, but perhaps reality is a seamless whole, and our understanding is merely a series of snapshots. The philosopher paused before a mural depicting the race between the swift-footed goddess Atalanta and the crafty hero Hippomenes. Think of the race, he said, gesturing to the vibrant images. At any given moment, Atalanta is not moving. She is merely in a state of readiness to move. Yet, she runs with such grace and speed that it seems she flows across the landscape. Alice felt a revelation dawn within her, the pieces of Zeno's puzzle slowly falling into place. They reached the edge of the city, where the bustle of the market gave way to the tranquil expanse of the countryside. Here, Zeno shared the paradox of the heat, asking Alice if a single grain of wheat constituted a heat, and if removing one grain would ever make a difference. Alice, now more confident in her understanding, began to see the underlying unity in all things, the way the infinite could be contained within the finite and how change could emerge from the unchanging 